March 9th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Luke chapter 24 from the New Testament. Now on the first day of the week, at early dawn, the women went to the tomb, taking the aromatic spices they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men stood beside them in dazzling attire. The women were terribly frightened and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has been raised. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then the women remembered his words, and when they returned from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. But these words seemed like pure nonsense to them, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. He bent down and saw only the strips of linen cloth. Then he went home wondering what had happened. Now that very day, two of them were on their way to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking to each other about all the things that had happened. While they were talking and debating these things, Jesus himself approached and began to accompany them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. Then he said to them, What are these matters you are discussing so intently as you walk along? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who doesn't know the things that have happened here in these days? He said to them, What things? The things concerning Jesus and Nazarene, they replied, a man who, with his powerful deeds and words, proved to be a prophet before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. Not only this, but it is now the third day since these things happened. Furthermore, some women of our group amazed us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back and said that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. So he said to them, You foolish people, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Wasn't it necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things written about himself in all the scriptures. So they approached the village where they were going. He acted as though he wanted to go further, but they urged him, stay with us because it is getting toward evening and the day is almost done. So he went in to stay with them. When he had taken his place at the table with them, he took the bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. At this point, their eyes were opened and they recognized him. Then he vanished out of their sight. They said to each other, Didn't our hearts burn within us while he was speaking with us on the road, while he was explaining the scriptures to us? So they got up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and those with them gathered together and saying, The Lord has really risen and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how they had recognized him when he broke the bread. While they were saying these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified, thinking they saw a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, it's me. Touch me and see, a ghost does not have flesh and bones like you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still could not believe it because of their joy and were amazed, he said to them, Do you have anything here to eat? So they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in front of them. 
Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it stands written, that the Christ would suffer and would rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his names to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And look, I am sending you what my father promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then Jesus led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. Now during the blessings he departed and was taken up into heaven, so they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and were continually in the temple courts, blessing God. God, I can't even imagine what it must have been like for the people that were close to you, the women who had come to, to the crucifixion, to your apostles, who were in such deep mourning. I think for the most part they understood that you were their Christ, but you were definitely their friend and their mentor and their brother. And I remember when, when my best friend was killed and that spot in your heart that seems to be endless, where the pain goes on forever and the hurt and the desperation, even when somebody is killed who we know is a follower of yours and we should Rejoice that they are now in heaven with you. That incredible sadness that they won't be in our lives anymore overtakes us in mourning. So I can't even imagine the women and the men, all the apostles in that room getting to see you, to touch you, to, to watch you eat, to hear your voice just one more time. I don't know if I would be frightened if I could see Eddie for one more time. Perhaps I would. I do know I have a trillion things I would tell him. <laughs> and I hope the apostles had time to tell you all those things that were in their heart. So often we forget that the people in the Bible were real people with real feelings and real emotions. They weren't specially created people just for these stories. They were the people who felt joy and the people who felt pain and the people who mourned over their friends. But more importantly, you continued to show them that there was something bigger than just your suffering on the cross. That their hope for eternal life, the forgiveness of their sins, was what was really at stake here. And that the fulfillment of everything that they had been taught throughout all the Old Testament books was being fulfilled in you. And now they needed to continue that journey. Oswald Chambers, who's one of my favorite Christian writers, has a great quote about that. No healthy Christian ever chooses suffering. He chooses God's will, as Jesus did, whether it means suffering or not. So even though I know your son suffered more than I will ever be able to understand up on that cross for me, I know it was your will for hope, for forgiveness, for love. 
I'm so excited at reading the rest of the stories that happen in the Bible. But I'm also really excited to see what you do with my story, God. I want it to be all about your will. And if that includes joy, and if that includes suffering, if that includes happiness, if that includes mourning, as long as it's your will, it's what I want. I love you so much. In your son's name we pray. Amen.